Hey guys, uh, <clears throat> I decided to do a couple videos because when I was trying to learn all this stuff, um, there wasn't a ton of videos out there. Haltech did have a few, and then I looked at some videos on some other platforms and tried to learn them this way. And on top of that, you know, making several phone calls to Haltech, which by the way probably has the best customer support of any product I've ever bought. Um, I love the fact that you can call them. And then you get a live person on the phone uh, as soon as you call. So uh, those guys are extremely knowledgeable, extremely helpful, and, and always seem to be in a good mood to help you out. So I definitely suggest doing that if you run into some issues with your, your system. Um, what I'm going to do is a couple of videos on a few things that I do a lot of. And it's the way I do it. Um, and I've learned it from other people who are smarter and probably way better tuners than I am so um, I've kind of integrated what they've done and what I do and it, it works for me um, most times anyway and so anyway I figured I'd just share a few things with you guys to uh, to help you out um, one of the most commonly requested things is boost control launch control uh, nitrous and stuff like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this video I'm just gonna do boost control in this video and then I'll move into some other stuff like uh, launch control and nitrous um, a little later I've, I have most of my experience with uh, turbo cars um, although I have tuned a index nitrous car and I gotta say I was really impressed with how how tech controls the nitrous stuff but anyway enough about that um, we're gonna set up boost control so the first thing we're gonna do is um, Go in here to the function, which is where you're going to set up stuff like nitrous and boost and uh, boost control, stuff like that. You're going to click on that and then you're going to add some of these maps. Um, let me show you something here. Some of these maps that come with Haltech, um, the stock maps already have boost control, so like I'm using just a Mustang map, and you'll see some of them already have uh, nitrous and Let's see, let's over here. Nitrous and turbo and all that type of stuff. So um, you can get some of the settings out of there. In fact, I think on the nitrous one, I use some of their settings whenever I was setting up the nitrous car. So anyway, just to kind of give you a heads up on that. I'm sure you already know it. But anyway, so you're going to go to uh, functions and then we're going to go down here and search. And we're going to type in boost. So we're going to go to boost control. Alright, um, the other thing I'm going to put in here is we're going to put in, again, um, my experiences with uh, trans brake type cars or uh, drag racing setup. So I'm going to set up a trans brake because on some of the settings I'm going to have in here, it's going to require trans brake. I've already got it. Good deal. And then, again, there is one solenoid type of setups. I don't really deal with any of those. In fact, I haven't dealt with any of them. Um, so I'll show you kind of what it looks like though. So when you add one of those functions, you're going to come over here and you're going to see it on the left side. Uh, so I added boost control and added all this for me. The table for a single solenoid boost control is going to look something like this. And it's RPM versus uh, manifold pressure. And then these numbers in here, I believe, are going to be the... Uh, duty cycle of the solenoids. Again, I don't have any experience with that, so I'm not going to pretend like I do and try to tell you how it works. But what I do have some experience with is the two solenoid CO2 setups like you would find on an AMS or a uh, loose leash. So I'm going to go in here and you'll have to wire the solenoids up again. Haltech is a really good wiring uh, diagram that shows you how to wire the solenoids and plumb them for a, a wastegate setup, uh, whether it's dual gates or a single gate. And so I'm just going to go pick this particular DPO, um, and you can use whatever you have available when you wire them up. Also, um, so they also have the idea or the uh, the way of having the scramble button, like you would again on a boost leash or something, and then a trim button, which you can pull boost out. I've never seen anybody use that. They're always adding boost, but I don't like to use my scramble button because when you select this it's going to take another input so to get a buy doing the same exact thing um, I just go in here and I add a generic correction a target pressure generic correction and what that does is it 
it's uh, I'm gonna show you here in a second. It's gonna be based on conditions. So um, when I go set up the transbrake stuff for the bump, I'll figure out whatever input that was. So let's say it was an AVI. Uh, I would go in here and I would just put AVI say five. Um, let's see what AVI is available here. I'm looking for an AVI input state. And do I have any available? Alright, let's try SPI. Let's see if we have any SPIs that are available. Yeah, so let's say SPI 1 input state. And again, I'm just selecting one because I want this particular um, parameter to be visible for me. So in the input state, the raw input state is either 1, which is active, or 0, which is not active. So um, is greater than or equal to. I like using greater than or equal to 1. Now, what that means is whenever that input sees connectivity or like I'm pushing the button, it's going to add that generic correction. All right. And where that generic correction goes is right here target pressure generic correction. Alright, and you can put, say, 10 pounds of extra gate pressure or whatever, whatever you want. Or if, say, you're on the street um, and you wanted to kind of roll that in slowly, you can have a race timer, which I'm about to show you. In fact, let me do it now because that's another one of those things that we're going to have to have. That's already set up. Um, we're going to have to have this race timer to... Um, to do a couple of different things based for drag racing. Again, this is for drag racing kind of setup. So instead of uh, boost control, target pressure being based on RPM, I want to base it on time. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find race time. Okay, so race time, there it is. Okay, and this is not what I would use but I'm just going to leave them in there because it's some numbers in there for now just to kind of show you what it's going to look like in fact the other thing you can do uh, I think I've already saved some actual pre-done race time numbers so instead of just opening it up and then just whatever numbers are there put numbers in there you can actually go to your files if you've already saved those and uh, so here it is I got race time 16 points and then I've already got this. I, this is this is what I use on my car. So now I'm gonna put it in there, and I've got this race time going across here. Um, and the way you save that is you go in here, you would just put all your numbers in. You're like, okay, I'm gonna use that on the next time or an, another particular function somewhere. And then you go to save, and then you would just name it, and then it'll end up being in your files just like you would a uh, like a map or something. Okay, so I got that uh, race time there, and let's say I want to add five pounds of gate pressure while I'm on the trans brake, which is zero on the race timer, and then I want to just, you know, over you know nine seconds, uh, I want to get up to say 25 pounds of gate pressure, and you're just going to highlight this, use L for linearize, and what it's going to do is it's going to slowly roll in that gate pressure over this time. Um, if you want to kind of know what it looks like, it's going to kind of look like that. And I'll just put this to you. I'll put 25 here so it looks pretty. Alright, so this is what it would look like. It would just ramp it in, you know, slowly over time. Uh, and then, now I was talking about this generic pressure correction where you can uh, basically your scramble button uh, say you were on the street and you didn't want to smack it with 10 pounds of gate pressure you can come over here same thing I'm going to enable the access I'm going to select race time and then I'm going to load my race timer in there because I don't want to go in here and do all these so I'll just go pick it oh of course not so this one has too many, so let's say uh, 0.001 because that's as soon as I push it, I want it to say to do something, and then let's say 0.25. I'll 
Now I want to hit it with just two PSI extra, and then I want to roll it in over five seconds if it was a very long drag race for whatever reason. Then I'm going to go up to say extra ten, and I'm going to again I'm going to linearize everything just so it's smooth. And then you'll see it's going to look like this. So now when you re-hit that scramble button, it's going to start slowly adding it so that you just start adding power over you know, a period of five seconds. Another, uh, well I'll get into the launch control later, but so anyway, that's that's boost control. That's how you're going to set it up based off the, uh, the race timer. And then, okay, so here's something else that's real important. Uh, the race timer is how you're actually going to start your boost control uh, because that's how we have it set up on that little right here on this this deal so the race time is what's actually going to start so you have to make sure when you're setting all this up that you set up your parameters for race time that you want to be able to start it so this essentially trans brake, trans brake input stake equals zero that means you've let off the trans brake and it's going to start that race timer and that race timer is going to start your boost control um, I think I also have another parameter in there, and this is throttle position is greater than 50%, um, so that it's not just going off every time you're testing your trans brake or something like that. You have a couple different parameters, and then the reset, um, you know, is whenever trans brake input stage is one. So it means when you hit the trans brake button again, it's going to reset and it's going to go back to zero on the race timer. Let's see, anything else that I can think of as far as boost control goes? Um, I think that's it. So, um, hope that helped you out. And if you've got any questions, let me know. And I'll, I'll make some other videos on the nitrous and trans brake and launch control and, and stuff like that. One last thing on the boost control stuff. Um, it comes to the PID settings for your, your CO2 solenoids. Um, I'm, again, I, most of the, what I've learned from pit settings is off of YouTube and then talking to uh, other tuners and stuff like that. And so I'll give you my version of what, what it is. I'm also going to try to put a link in the video to a YouTube video that does a really good job of explaining them. Because uh, pit settings aren't just used for you know, race car applications and boost control solenoids and things like um, O2 control, stuff like that. They're used for a lot of different things uh, in the real world. So. Uh, just to kind of give you a brief summary of what I understand of it is proportional is the numbers you're going to put in there to get from where you're at to the commanded target pressure so that it's that error that you're trying to make up. Your integral is the, um, that's how aggressively your controller is going to try to get you to the target pressure or how fast. And then the derivative is the number you're going to use to try to keep from overshooting. So. You know, the integral, you might have a real aggressive integral gain, which is going to get you up to where you want to be really quickly, but to keep from overshooting, you're going to need a derivative number in there to keep you from getting too, too far over that target. So um, these, I used uh, the boost control solenoids off of my boost leash whenever I sold the leash. And um, these are the older solenoids, not the brand new ones they have out. And these numbers uh, were given to me, and help, I helped get these numbers uh with Victor over at Haltech. Again, their their customer support is just phenomenal. Um, I don't think there's been an issue. He hasn't helped me get past whenever I've had problems. And, and I'll always try to troubleshoot something and figure it out first before I make the call. But um, every so often, I just, in the interest of time and, you know, aggravation, I'll give them a call. And, and again, those guys are there super knowledgeable. So um, the proportional on my solenoids, the uh, boost leash solenoids is 750. The integral is a thousand and the derivative is a hundred. Uh, most people are using the max solenoids. So I'm going to show you uh, some numbers on an LS boost motor I'm working on right now. Alright, so these are the max control solenoids, and you can see on this one um, they've got it the, the target or the error in the the pressure you're trying to get to, you've got a target. Um, 
little span of target pressures here. So the further away you get from the target, the more aggressive the controller becomes. So these are proportional numbers. Um, here's the integral. Same thing. As the further it gets away from the target, the more aggressive the numbers get. Let's try to keep it where it needs to be. And then the derivative number is 200. So anyway, that's uh, I'm gonna try to put a link into that YouTube video to help kind of explain this. Uh, probably the best way to, if you don't use any sonar or you need something completely different, the best way to try to find these numbers there and work for you is to uh, is trial and error, um, unless you know somebody else that has the numbers. And uh, hopefully that kind of give you uh, somewhere to go.